Kate from NanoGirl. I'm a marine scientist and I love the ocean. Humans use our ocean resources for heaps of different things, like food, transport, tourism, and it's a major source of minerals. When we say protecting the ocean, what we mean is that we want to ensure that our oceans stay healthy and survive long term, so that all these resources are still accessible for future generations. Now the ocean is connected by what's called the Global Ocean Conveyor. And just like a conveyor belt that you might have seen at the supermarket, it's a long moving loop of ocean currents, which transports water, nutrients, plants and animals all around the world. The ocean conveyor is a mixture of warm, shallow currents at the surface with colder, deeper currents underneath. And what keeps them moving is heat. I've got an experiment to show you what I mean. If you want to do this experiment with me, you will need a large shallow tray like a baking dish, which is either see-through or a light color, cold water, hot water, a spoon, some ice, two different colors of food coloring, I've got red and blue, and some ocean islands to help you along the way, and I've got some shells. So to start off, we're gonna make it a bit easier to see the difference between our warm water and cold water. So I'm gonna take my cold water and add a drop of blue food coloring, and just give it a stir with my spoon, and a few drops of red food coloring into my warm water. Now I'm gonna give it a stir. Now I'm gonna pour my cold water into this dish. This is gonna be the ocean. And I'm gonna add some ice cubes. Now the coldest parts of our oceans are at the poles, so that's the Arctic and Antarctic, which are covered for part of the year with ice. So this blue water is gonna be the colder parts of the ocean around the northern and southern parts of our planet. And we need this water to be really cold, so I'm just gonna swirl this ice around for a few minutes. Now I'm gonna pop some of my shells in here. And these shells are actually gonna act like islands in the ocean. So we can see how ocean currents behave differently out in the middle of the ocean to how they behave around the coastlines of the land. Now I'm gonna add my warm red water. And the warmest parts of our ocean are near the equator, where the heat from the sun warms the ocean surface. So let's pour in the warm water at one end and see how this works. Let's watch what happens. And you can see that the hot water moves through the colder water and it creates these currents. And you might also be able to see some spirals forming where the hot and cold water meet. Oceanographers call these spirals eddies. And if you look at a thermal image of the ocean, you can see exactly the same thing. And you might be able to see that our water currents change depending on how close they are to the land. And this happens in the real ocean too. So you can see how mixing warm and cold water creates movement. The colder water actually sinks underneath the warmer water, which is what helps to keep our ocean currents moving. Currents of warm and cold water moving past the land have a huge effect on our climate as they bring warm and cold air with them. And the moving currents also wash tiny animals called zooplankton and plants called phytoplankton around with them. And bigger animals eat the plankton, so they tend to follow currents as well, and they move through lots of different environments. And that's why, if we want to protect marine animals, we need to think about protecting a few different areas. Now you know how ocean currents work and how they affect our lives. So here are some more questions for you to investigate. How do the ocean currents behave in the ocean closest to where you live? Which is saltier, colder or warmer water? How do animals navigate using ocean currents? And next time you get out and about around the coastline, keep an eye out for all our amazing marine life. Bye!